My name is Jonathan Yee, and I'm a junior at Hillsborough High School. Since my sophomore year, I've taken a keen interest in coral reefs, which I'm sure most of you are somewhat familiar with. So now, I want you to take a moment to really visualize them in your head. I want you to imagine the different fish swimming around, all the vibrant colors, the U-shaped structures, and just all the life surrounding it. Because I want you to realize that coral reefs aren't just some geographical structure. They are living systems of life. But this is also where the problem is, because these systems of life are dying, and they're dying because of coral bleaching. So what exactly is coral bleaching then? Coral bleaching is the phenomenon in which the corals lose their color and their main source of energy, which makes them incredibly susceptible to coral death. In the past three decades, we've lost over 50% of all of our coral reefs, and the ones that do remain are in incredibly poor condition. This trend has been spurred by the increasing temperatures of the ocean water. You see, corals form a symbiotic relationship with an algae known as zooxanthellae. The zooxanthellae provides the coral with over 90% of the energy that it needs to survive, and in return, the corals provide the zooxanthellae with shelter and protection. However, due to increasing temperatures and other environmental stressors, the zooxanthellae inevitably become damaged and are unable to provide the corals with the nutrients that the coral need to survive. Consequently, the corals expel the zooxanthellae, resulting in coral bleaching. In the past few years, the number of mass coral bleachings have skyrocketed. And if this trend continues, coral reefs will become the sixth mass extinction event in Earth's history. Coral reefs and other marine ecosystems simply don't have the time to evolve in their relationships and adapt to the rapidly changing environment. Now, I want you to really consider the implications that the loss of coral reefs has on the environment. Coral reefs alone account for over 25% of all known marine species. And if we lose the coral reefs, that means we will lose these species and the biodiversity of marine life. Simply put, without coral reefs, the ecosystems will collapse. If this alone cannot convince you that coral reefs need saving, take a moment to really consider the implications that the loss of coral reefs have on human life. The loss of coral reefs means the loss of vital resources that many marginalized fishing communities depend on. In some regions, their economy is completely dependent on the resources that the coral reefs provide. Not only that, marine organisms play a huge part in the diets of the global population, and without them, more and more people will begin to become victims of starvation. The loss of our coral not only affects marine life, it also affects us. Without corals, we will starve, we will lose our jobs, and we will lose a piece of what makes life so beautiful. The reality is a grim one for both coral reefs and humans alike. So if you don't care enough for the coral reefs, take the time to really consider the future of mankind. Because in all honesty, without the coral reefs, billions of people are going to suffer. This issue has been pressing in my mind for the past two years now. Two years ago, I took up the Science Olympiad event water quality in the hopes of having a chance to compete on my school's A team. Yeah, ironically enough, this event ended up becoming my favorite and taught me to really consider and look at the ocean in a different way. It wasn't long after that that I became captivated by coral reefs and determined to put an end to coral bleaching. Now, unlike marine science, genetics has always been an interest of mine. So the second I began to think about a solution, using gene editing, editing technologies like CRISPR-Cas9 instantly came to me. However, rather than focusing on the coral itself, I want to focus on the symbiote zooxanthellae. I believe that genetically modifying zooxanthellae and improving its resilience is an incredibly promising solution to coral bleaching because the very basis of coral bleaching is the expulsion of zooxanthellae. Here's how this solution would work. By genetically modifying the heat response related genes of zooxanthellae, we can give them the ability to function in higher temperatures, which would decrease the amount of coral bleaching. Using our understanding of the zooxanthellae genome and the genomes of other similar species, we can identify what the genes are that need to be modified. And then using CRISPR-Cas9 and other technologies, we can actually modify them to increase their expression and thus increase the heat tolerance of zooxanthellae. Using microinjections, we can inject this modified DNA into the algae, assisting in the evolution of our coral reefs. Over time, this enhanced heat response will become a key trait in all of these zooxanthellae, and with this, the evolution of zooxanthellae will be complete. The symbiotic relationship that it forms with coral will also consequently evolve. By ensuring that corals and their zooxanthellae can maintain their relationship, we can prevent mass future, future mass coral bleachings around the world. 
But the evolution of corals is not enough. We too must evolve. We need to evolve in our perception and our attitude. While I'm working towards a scientific solution for coral bleaching, I'm also working to spread awareness to this issue. I'm currently writing for Oceanographic Magazine. We'll be publishing an article that discusses this assisted evolution. And it really emphasizes the fact that the fate of coral reefs is in our hands. I'll also be speaking at the 14th International Coral Reef Symposium this summer, discussing how we can more actively engage the youth in saving the environment. Just recently, I received a $1,000 fund to implement infographics at my school's water fountain. There are many things that we can do to raise awareness to this issue, and there are things that you and I can do to make more environmentally conscious decisions to reduce our impact on the coral reefs. By reducing our coral carbon footprint and volunteering to do environmental cleanups, we can make small changes that will help improve our situation. Additionally, if you live near a coral reef, you can always volunteer to help out with local preservation efforts. More importantly, you can become educated on the issue and inform your friends and family on what is going on. The real evolution becomes, it begins with the evolution of our perception, and that change all starts with an initial awareness. We need to recognize that we are going down a path of destruction that will inevitably result in the extinction of coral reefs. And not long after the extinction of coral reefs, we will be next.